Let's look at another example of an integral. This time, let's find the antiderivative of the function x over the square root of x squared plus 4. Now, in this example, you can see that this square root of x squared plus 4, um, that being in the denominator really indicates to me that, hey, we could use a trigonometric substitution to help us out here, right? Because after all, if we use the substitution, uh, the second type, that is the tangent substitution, we could set x equals to 2 tangent, and we could simplify or we could convert the integral into trigonometric form from there, and then we could calculate the antiderivative. No, that, not, so, not so bad, right? But one thing I do want to mention is that although trigonometric substitution is a very valuable tool and it would work successfully in this situation, it might not be the best tool, right? You could take x to be 2 tangent, and that would be very fruitful, but I actually do have a other recommendation in this one. Instead, if we take u to be x squared plus 4, uh, notice that du would then equal 2x dx, for which if we times by 2 and times by 1 half there, uh, we can do a u substitution where this thing would become 1 half the integral of du over the square root of u, or more simply, 1 half uh, u to the negative 1 half power du. So then by the power rule, we end up with 1 half, well, u, you raise the power to be 1 half, you'll then divide by 1 half, for which case we should just mention that the 1 halves just cancel each other out entirely, plus a constant, and then replacing u with the original variable x, we're going to get the square root of x squared plus 4 plus an arbitrary constant. And so you can see that in this situation, the u substitution was a much simpler approach than trigonometric substitution. So this one can be very challenging about integrals at times is that uh, we have so many different techniques. We have the U substitution, the trigonometric substitution, um, just as two variants of the substitution method. We didn't even touch integration by parts here. It can be a challenge, it's challenging at times to figure out what is the right, the right technique to use. And this kind of comes with experience and practice. You gain an intuition of things after a while. Now, by all means, if you try to compute this with trigonometric substitution, that wouldn't be bad. It just would be a little bit longer, right? Um, and so before we necessarily jump into the pool on trig subs or integration parts or whatever, I would recommend that you try to consider what are alternative strategies I could use and then pick the path that's going to be the most optimal. What's the fastest way to compute it? So don't just automatically assume trigonometric substitution. You might want to keep in mind, well, would a standard U substitution work in the situation which we saw right here? And so that brings us to the end of our lecture, uh, number 12, uh, about trigonometric substitutions. Um, I do want to continue this discussion in the next lecture, 13, so check out that video to learn some more about uh, trig subs, especially for like a secant substitution, which we haven't done yet. Uh, but that'll officially end lecture 12 right here, so thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions on any of these lecture videos, please click uh, and post them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, like this video, subscribe to it if you want to see some more videos like this in the future. And I will see you next time. Bye, everyone.